Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is June 13th of 2018, and it's almost 2 a.m. in the morning. Let me click on this here so it's not zooming or tracking my face. Now, this is going to be, well, one I want to tell you about a uh, TV show. I think it's on, I should have checked. I think it's on Netflix. Well, maybe I've got some information here to tell where it is. Um, going to tell you about a TV show. Uh, going to tell you about my setup. I always tell you about my setup because I'm always changing it. And because also if you're into making videos, uh, might help you out a little bit. You might. I decide that you like some of the equipment that I'm using or you don't like some of the equipment that I'm using or something. So I'll tell you a little bit about the setup. And then usually, too, that's a big part of my day or week or whatever because I'm always trying out new stuff and hooking stuff up and moving it around, trying to rearrange it. So I'll tell you about that. And uh, also, this is going to be a little bit of a story time, but whoops, I'm sorry about hitting that microphone, probably, and what else, well, let's just get into it, rather than me try to remember, um, you may notice here, I'm not sure if you can tell or not, well, over here is a piece of marble that I found out at the trash uh, area here, back, I don't know, a year or two ago, several years ago it was out there. And I was just amazed that this piece of marble here had been thrown away out at, and it was out at the trash container. I um, think it was yesterday. I don't think you can tell. I should have measured this for you. This is, I was, um, went to the mailbox and came back and the uh, maintenance guy here was out at the trash containers smashing a desk. Somebody had put a desk there. Uh, you see things out there like washing machines and uh, this is a very nice apartment complex, by the way. And the maintenance people do an excellent job of responding if you have some type of a problem. And then also uh, one of their jobs is that if people put stuff out, which I'm not, I'm not really sure when you sign a lease with these people. I told them, I think a couple of times over the years that I've been here, I don't even read the lease. And they were like, oh, what? You know, it was like, it's sort of like these software things or sites you join or whatever, where there are multiple pages of information. I mean, I, I read it enough, uh, the lease enough to know what I have to pay each month. But I, uh, so I'm not sure exactly what the requirement, but for putting stuff out at the trash containers, they have, uh, I think it's three or four large trash containers, and then they have one for recyclable material. But uh, anyway, he, the, the maintenance guy was out there demolishing a large desk that somebody had put out there and uh, it must have had a because he had this laying over to the side must have had this uh, piece of marble on it I'm guessing because he had it laid over there at the side and I just love marble there's certain things I love titanium marble I don't have any gold but I would love to have some gold but anyway this was over there so I went over and asked him, uh, are, are you going to dispose of that or, you know, and uh, he said, uh, did you want it? I said, yeah. I, so anyway, he said, okay. So I went and got my dolly and brought it over and cleaned it up and uh, put it on here. I'm not really sure. I just love it so much that, I mean, I love marble so much that I'm not sure it's going to work out the best for me, you know. Maybe I'll find a way to slide it or something, rather. But 
I'm also figuring, you know, that if I, and which I don't do a lot, if I zoom in to show you something, you know, that would uh, look better than this. I mean, this is an old desk. I from a guy here was moving out, and this is a really big desk, and uh, he sold it real cheap, so I bought it from him and got it in here, and it's really sturdy. But uh, I think I'm off subject again. Anyway, um, I still have quite a few items that I was given to review uh, on Amazon. And then, of course, I've, I've told you that Amazon, uh, without any, uh, they, I had no contact with Amazon. They, all of a sudden, somebody said, uh, one of my viewers, uh, what happened to all your Amazon reviews? There was over, over 200 of them, and every one of them had a video. I'd made every review also had a video in it of the thing I was reviewing. And they said, where are your... Uh, where are your Amazon reviews? And I went and looked, all gone. No communication from Amazon about why they objected to what I were I was doing, which that had to be, you know. And no, uh, you know, nothing that, no word that they were removing my uh, reviews. Uh, nothing. So, uh, but anyway, I still have. So I gave the uh, maintenance guy a uh, closed circuit television system that I'd been sent to review because I had no use for it, and it would uh, I couldn't afford to send it to somebody. I mean, you know, shipping would cost wouldn't cost more than well, it would almost probably cost more than the uh, system. So I gave uh, I gave it to him. So we had a little conversation. And, you know, it started out about, well, it's going to be a hot day. And I said, yeah. I said, I don't envy you guys out here working in this kind of weather. And, and uh, I, I said, of course, I spent 30 years working hospital security. And there was times I was outside the entire, you know, in freezing, unbelievably cold weather and, and, and extremely, high, you know, hot weather with high humidity and, and uh, everything. And. Uh, then he, he said, well, it's not too bad. He said, uh, cause I did construction and this isn't as bad as a construction. And then I said, well, I, um, uh, I worked as a welder for about 15 years and, uh, you know, conditions were there again, you know, welding and freezing weather, uh, welding actually in rain. <laughs> underneath railroad cars. A lot of times when I would strike an arc or whatever, I'd get an electrical shock. Uh, I, I didn't tell him this. I'm, but I said, yeah, I, I worked uh, about 15 years welding and everything. And then uh, something was mentioned. can't remember now how I got into it, but I, I told him about that I tried to get into the military. And then I told him a little bit, and then I thought, whoops, uh, I need to make a YouTube video on that because of something he that he said, and the fact that, oh, well, let me just tell you the, uh, the story of that. So this is going to be a little bit of story time. Uh, now, I have told, like, part of this, I'm not sure, I'm going to try to tell the whole thing here, so maybe I can watch this. I don't usually watch my videos, which you really need to do if you make a YouTube video. You need to watch it to make sure the audio doesn't drop out or the whatever doesn't happen, but I don't want to see myself or hear myself, but I may have to, maybe I can do it and 
come up with a number and then say, you know, underneath this, if you don't want to hear my story, jump to, you know, whatever minutes it is and skip it. Anyway, uh, when I was, you know, a kid in grade school or whatever, I had an older cousin who went into the army and when he came back from, you know, he to uh, basic, from basic training, he came back and then, you know, uh, showed up and he was a drinker and my mother and father were drinkers and uh, they would drink together. But anyway, he would show up and tell us about, you know, going through basic training and then uh, he became a military police officer. So I guess he went on to the training for the military police and you know then he came back on leave or whatever it was and talked about that and he occasionally would well, well like he went to Germany and was assigned with the atomic cannon thing I guess doing security you know police functions or whatever when they moved the cannon and through uh, Germany and what have you and then later he ended up going to, well, so he was in Germany for the Army of Occupation. And uh, then he was sent to Korea for the Army of Occupation. So he was kind of looking out, I think, missing the actual war, you know. And then he eventually retired from the, uh, from the Army. So I'm thinking that probably the reason that I decided at an early age that I wanted to go into the Army was probably because of the stories he came back and he brought, you know, little insignias or uh, Korean coins, stuff like that. And I was a kid. So uh, when I got out of grade school in 1955, I went to De La Salle Military Academy, a Catholic school taught by the Christian brothers. And it was uh, military full time. Well, it was, you know, religion full time. And, and uh, it was what they call 55, I think it was a 55C, I think that was it, from Section 55C or whatever of whatever document covers RO, junior ROTC programs. Uh, here in the United States, uh, you know, uh, you can. Well, some school, there are some schools that are 55C, but not many. Most of your high schools, it's, you know, regular ROTC. And I'm guessing I never went to a regular high school. I'm guessing it's two or three days a week. You have like one hour uh, of military. Then they probably have special events that they do. Like, well, I know they do because uh, like my school, we every year we marched in the Veterans Day Parade downtown. Uh, there was an ROTC circus at the Municipal Auditorium where every year all the ROTC units would show up. Ours, of course, was 500, so that was a large, uh, a large unit. We did mass calisthenics. And other units did other, you know, drill, uh, precision drill and stuff like that. So there was things like that also. But at our school, uh, every morning, the first thing, you know, we were in uniform at all times, military, you know, military type uniforms. And uh, every morning before the beginning of school, you know, in other schools here in the United States, kids may stand up in the class and pledge allegiance to the flag. Uh, we fell in front of the school, you know, five days a week in full military, uh, you know, in band, you know, military band, uh, the colors, color guard, uh, sound of the colors was played, the national anthem was played, you know. Uh, I don't think we usually fall in, fall in. <laughs> I don't think we usually drew the M1s. Uh, well, the officers had their sabers, but 
but I don't think because that would have taken a little bit of time to you know for 500 of us to get our M1s out of the rack just for that. So I'm not sure we did. We had our M1s in the morning, but we fell in. The band played, all that kind of stuff. Then we went to you know our home rooms, and then we would have every day at one hour of well Monday through Thursday, one hour of military. And then on Fridays, we came in dress uniforms. And at noon, so half day, we had a, a half day of regular classes. And then for the second half of the day, uh, it was three, four hours, whatever it was, of all military. And there was a full dress parade at the climax of it in a park that was across the street from the school. And if you look on a Google map now, uh, well, my high school no longer is, does no longer exist. Uh, De La Salle Military Academy, after many, many years, uh, stopped being military and then eventually uh, merged with another Catholic high school, you know, went out of existence although there's still an alumni, you know, group that uh, meets and has events and stuff. But um, so today, if you look on the Google map for the, where the, uh, which would be what, 16th and Paseo, I think, Kansas City, Missouri, the park area is called the Parade across from, the, so the people that I'm sure that live in the area probably why is this called the parade? You know, well, that's the reason because we had a parade there every Friday. Um, so I wanted to be in the military, and when I graduated from in 1959 from De La Salle Military Academy, um, went down to enlist, and I had things going on, so I got out of things that I was doing. I was uh, I was in civil defense. I was in the Ground Observer Corps. Um, those had no connection to the school. I mean, they were things I did. And uh, civil defense, Ground Observer Corps, I did a radio. Pro well, I didn't have to cancel that. I think that had already been, I'd already been kicked off the radio station. I had, did a radio program that was broadcast around the world two or three times a week, depending on the seasons, because uh, they changed frequencies and stuff depending on the ionospheric, which is affected also by this time of year. But anyway, so I canceled some stuff that I was doing, and uh, also I put out a monthly publication on shortwave radio and DXing and amateur radio and so I canceled that uh, went down to enlist went in I glad to see me you know and and uh, gave me a test a little written test and asked me a whole bunch of questions and uh, I said no, you know, I mean, you know, have you had tuber tuberculosis? Blah, 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 you know, no, no. And I said the only thing wrong with me, I'm just a little bit underweight. He says, yeah, you do look underweight. Uh, so he says, you know, you're five eleven and and you weigh, uh, I think it was 119 pounds or something. And so he got a book and he actually <laughs> had to blow dust off of it, flipped it. Oh, he says you're 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. I didn't know they had a minimum weight requirement. And uh, so he's sorry, you know, we can't we can't take you. So I went on home. Two or three years later, I got uh, notified by the Selective Service. Let's see. Got contacted by the Selective Service Administration, starting in uh, 1917 for World War One. A Selective Service system was set up in the United States. Everybody 
all males had to register for it. And uh, local boards were set up with local people to uh, <coughs> decide who went into the military. And they had different uh, different ways of picking the people. I'm sure, since it was local people, I'm sure could have been un un unfair in a way or, you know, but... Um, so I, you're required, uh, you're still required, by the way, to sign up males. I don't think females are yet. Just You're, you're still required when you reach uh, a certain age here in the United States to sign up for the selective service. We don't have a draft anymore. and uh, But you're required to sign up. And if you don't sign up now, Okay, here it is, yeah. So it wasn't this way when I, you know, but you're required to sign up and uh, if you don't sign up, you'll be ineligible for uh, federal student aid, student loans, Pell Grants, job training, and um, naturalization, and a whole bunch of other things. And I don't think hardly, I don't think, I, I think an awful lot of young men probably do not know that they need to sign up. Maybe in high school, maybe at some point the school reminds, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so two or three later after, two or three years later after I tried to get into the military, I got a notice that I was required to report at such and such a time. I went down there. Uh, they had us all stripped naked. There were 200 of us. I always say this. Uh, I know there were 200 of us all naked because they took a magic marker and marked one <laughs> on, you know, on on your chest, one to 200, you know. So uh, right away, so there's 200 of us naked. Right away, the doctor comes over to me, comes through everybody, you know, comes over, walks up to me and only me. And uh, I still weighed, I think, about 119 pounds, maybe a couple pounds more. And uh, and I did, out of the 200 there, uh, I could have been, I should have auditioned for a movie or about the, Holocaust or something because I was skin and bones. I think 119 pounds is probably what your bones weigh. So uh, he came over and said, have you been sick? I said, no. Have you been in the hospital? I said, no. I said, okay. So then we go through the procedure. Uh, you know, you they check you, listen to your heart, that type of stuff. Uh, Everybody, you're lined up, and they uh, draw blood, and the big football players were <laughs> fainting. Uh, then they, they had a, like a door, and you go up to it, and uh, somebody on the other side says something, a number or something. If you can hear that, that's your hearing test. By the way, I forgot to tell you that when I was in grade school, uh, for at least two years, maybe three years, that was at Holy Name grade school. So that was first grade to fourth grade. They had a hearing test. You'd go to the, there wasn't room for all of us to go at one time, you know, but your class goes to the library. They had the headphones, you put them on. And in my entire life, you know, I never cheated except for the hearing test. I tried to cheat. I mean, in grade school, Holy Name, St. Vincent's, I never cheated. High school, I never cheated. You know, tried to copy somebody else's. And at De La Salle Military, never cheated. Uh, Longview Community College, didn't cheat. Penn Valley Community College, didn't cheat. Uh, Weaver School of Real Estate, I didn't cheat. Uh, Federal Protective Officer Test, although that was a civil service test. I think it would be pretty hard. And the post office exam, I, I, Never, but when I was in grade school, and I thought it was kind of funny, 
you know, I was in second or third grade, and we're at this table, and they have the headphones on, and I see everybody, all the other kids are writing on their, on the form, so I was looking so I could copy off of somebody else, you know, and I remember a girl covering up her, and I was thinking, uh, why are you covering up your test paper? I mean, this is a hearing test, you know. So I knew that I, because they then they sent this card home, kind of a graft on it, both ears, even I could tell, you know. Ooh, <laughs> this is bad. Gave it to my parents, nothing ever happened. So, but I totally forgot about all this, about my hearing problem. So in the selective service thing, you know, they I heard whatever the whoever, whatever number they said or whatever I heard that. So my hearing was okay. Well, it wasn't okay, but it, for they thought it was okay. So uh, then it was uh, not long before noon. So we'd been there for three or four hours, something like that. Everybody had to. Uh, give a urine specimen and a hundred and uh, 99 guys gave a urine specimen and I couldn't give one so they said okay of course everybody else left so there I am this big place the only one every once in a while they'd say can you give a specimen nope I said can I go across to the union station and get a coke oh no you know so I think they must have closed about 4 o'clock or something, so about 3.30 or whatever. They said, okay, you can go across the street and get a Coke. Went across, got a Coke, came back, pissed in the thing for them. Always worried for, now I don't have that problem. You know, get now if I were to go someplace and they need a urine, I, when I get there, I'd say, can I get the specimen right now? Uh, um so anyway, uh, I get a card, I get a letter from the Selective Service Administration. It says that I am 1A. I think they, uh, here's the codes. So 1A is available for unrestricted military service. So I got a card 1A. I thought, God damn, I wanted to go into military two or three years ago. Okay, so I go on down to the recruiter, and he says, oh, okay, well, you're on my list. If, if you hadn't have come down, I'd have been contacting you. To, and I said, okay, and so we started filling out the every, you know everything, and I said, I'm kind of pissed. You know, uh, I wanted to go into military, and I came down several years ago and I said you guys told me I wasn't you know you wouldn't didn't take me and he said why and I said he said I was under the minimum under 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement and he said oh well just a second and so he called over to that medical place across from the Union Station and gave my name or whatever and then they looked at it and I guess they didn't very often look at height and weight and uh that so they looked at it and they said oh yeah he he's he's one y and that's uh registrant is qualified for military service only in time of war or national emergency so that no military service for me uh because of donald trump that when they were when i think he was running for president or maybe after he became president uh, they talked about how he did everything in the world he could he, he's a few years I think he's 71 I believe I'm 77 he's a few years younger than I am but uh, they talked about him and what he did to stay out of the military student deferment student deferment student deferments and then when he couldn't use those deferments anymore for that, 
then he had a bone spur in his foot or something rather that got him classified as uh, one Y. And then they mentioned in the uh, article, I'm sure I didn't read it in the paper, I'm sure I was reading it online, they mentioned that at such and such a date all the one Ys uh, were abolished in December, on December 10th of 1971, and I didn't know that, and then those people were giving, were given a 4F, and that's registration, registrant, not acceptable for military service, uh, so I didn't know that I was 4F, one Y, 4F sounded kind of bad. And uh, I always thought it was one Y. But uh, the reason this kind of popped up was when um, I mentioned to the maintenance guy here something about trying to get in the military and that I was disqualified be and I never thought of the, the hearing problem uh, that uh, I couldn't get in because I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement and he said he said I didn't know they had any weight requirements and I said well, I didn't either at the time and that's when I thought I need to do a YouTube video on the entire uh, entire thing but uh, I watched been watching in the past well I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I watched uh, you know video from about from somebody who was a marine what is or was a marine and somebody that's in in or was in the army or whatever and apparently what they do now is uh, if you're over or underweight they will take you and I forget which service it is. It's a little bit different how they do it. But they'll take you. And if you are overweight, like you get 30 minutes to eat. And I mean, they're, you know, they're rough on you. And I think especially like the Marine Corps, you have 30 minutes to eat. And you have to eat all your food. And... Uh, I forget exactly the thing, but they make it like it. It's like hell. So if you're overweight, you get like 15 minutes to eat, and you get less food, and you you have to eat in 15 minutes, and that's it. <laughs> if you're um, underweight, I think you may get a little bit longer than 30 minutes. But you get certain food, and you have to eat it, you know, eat that or whatever. So, and then, then of course, with the, all the exercise you're doing and that type of stuff, uh, it's really though a good thing that I got that they kept me out because of my weight. Because with the hearing, I, you know, I like when I went down. The first time, I don't think I did when the second time, I'm not sure. But, you know, I uh, just got out of high school, and I told my parents, well, I'm going down to enlist. And uh, then I came home, and I said, well, they wouldn't take me. But my father would have told everybody, you know, hey, my son's going in the military. He's He's gone. They would have sent me by bus or whatever to, the you know, the military would have sent me by bus. I'd have gone down there. And sometime during that first couple of weeks when you're there, when they're checking everything and having you do everything and fill out everything or whatever, they would have done the real hearing test and they would have uh, given me a ticket and put me on a train or bus and sent me back home and I would have shown up. That would have been embarrassing for me and it would have been embarrassing for my parents and uh, back then, I guess he would have been a second cousin. 
and I only saw him one time because he was my mother's my mother's brother you know got married that, that would be my aunt and uh, anyway she had a brother and that guy had I don't you know a son maybe had other kids he had a son and he was older than I was and I met him one time for some reason and uh, so and I never saw him again but he went I'm not sure if he got drafted or whatever but he went uh, down to you know the military and during that couple weeks or whatever they sent him home and people said that you know it was because he was gay and I think maybe he I think maybe he was but I would not like to have been uh, sent home because I think that's what everybody would have thought but uh, so that's that's the story of the reason that I couldn't get into the military and the fact that if you younger people or people in the military may not realize that there was a time when you couldn't get in because of you know weight requirements I imagine that that's I'm surprised you know there must be some requirement I mean what if somebody shows up that's 600 pounds uh, definitely I mean they're going so there there is some but I guess if you show up 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement now or 40 pounds over or whatever it is uh, the military will if you know if you meet the other you know requirements that then they want you or something so so uh, that's the end of that story now that I have told the story I'm not sure why I told it um, let's see here uh, please subscribe and click the bell if you uh, when you do subscribe so you get notices Hap and Leonard and it says it's on the Sun Dancer or that's where it was originated but that's I think it's on Netflix now I wonder if this is going to be it's only one minute here and I'm not sure I have the audio set anyway here's the uh, trailer for it I recommend it uh, recommend it very much to you maybe I'll go full screen here Man, that's why dudes don't hug each other. <laughs> Get the radio on again. Just try. Those aren't cheap. You can take a man's job, but you can't take his cookies. There's a million dollars at the bottom of that river. We gotta shoot somebody. Here comes trouble. from the rich to help the people that need it. Ow. My girlfriend just loves kitties. Oh. Nobody tell me I was going to be on a redneck safari. The guns came out. I think I can stop that. Bring the beautiful picture of me up here. So that's the trailer for... Uh, Happen and Leonard and especially in this uh, season one and there's three seasons and I've watched season one and two and season three hasn't been hasn't come over to 
I think it's Netflix. But I really enjoyed it. Uh, here is the trailer for season two. I'm going to show less of it even. We may get hit with a infringement here or whatever by showing, you know, but anyway. What the hell is that? That was a Mount Happy drooling. <laughs> Just to do with a dead body under the house. So, I do recommend it to you, and I'll put underneath what it is. I think it's Netflix. Okay, I think it's Amazon. Because somebody down here says Seasons 2 still runs in Germany on Amazon Prime. So I think it's Amazon. And I guess the author of the books is Joe Lansdale. This person here says he writes like no one else. So Somebody here says, <coughs> The Iron Way says, this is one of the best series out today. I think that's probably true. Okay, and I'll try to put the links to some of this stuff underneath. The uh, headset I'm using It's unavailable, and I don't think it's going to be back anymore. I think it works very well. Uh, they've just moved on to, this is a Sadie's A6. It's a USB, and seems like it works well. But I think what you would have to do now is, uh, well, here it is listed down here, A6 if you can get it okay so it is still available uh, so I'll put a link to it it's nice and comfortable and uh, seems like it works you know works great so I will leave that there so I can get the link and put it there But, you know, they have, I think, newer ones. So. Okay, I don't think I need to go through that today. Okay, I do think. I played with this for a little tiny bit in the past. And I think I'm going to do it again. So this is the device. It plugs into the USB on your camera, on your uh, computer. And it says uh, PC or Mac. Then this plugs into uh, your camera. And you have to make sure, and I'm not, what see, uh, you have to check that. I'm not sure if that's a mini USB, a micro USB, or what in the hell it is, but I hooked it up, and I have three, yeah, three Panasonic cameras, and of the three that I have, it works with my G7 because there's a uh, you know a plug-in that it that it that it works with. So it works with the and it other works with other cameras and uh, 
some cameras. So I'm going to be playing with that again because I did have two monitors on this desk. I now have an open space over here. So for that reason, I'm going to put a tripod there and uh, hook it up. Also, I don't know if I... No, that's not it. It's on my wish list. It's okay, let me go to a list. Okay, this here is, I heard him talking about this on uh, Twit TV. It's only $40. And it works with uh, Apple or Android. So you can uh, zoom, do all types of things, you know with this it will do tracking and all that type of stuff and it's only uh, f only forty dollars and so I'm, I'm probably going to get this pretty quick and give it a try uh, I mean it's ideal for security and surveillance but I'm just wondering I can mount it on a tripod and could uh, And I could even put it up, up high or whatever. When I started doing, you know, videos, which is before, uh, before Amazon, before YouTube, before all of them, I, uh, a lot of times I would have my camera way up high, aiming down, showing the entire room. And I just, I just like that, you know, that idea. Uh, and so I may play, get this and play around with it. So you may be seeing that here before long, maybe a few weeks. Anyway, I think that's it. This, uh, I need a faster computer. I know this video is probably going to be long. I mean, it can take me a couple hours probably to upload it. So I uh, better bring it to a conclusion. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, too, if I can stand it, I'll try to uh, figure out when the TV review begins so I can tell you to skip to it if you're not interested in hearing me talk about the selective service and my experience with trying to get into the military. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching.